So for today, uh, listen, we're going to wrap up our series on Habakkuk. We've been in it the past couple of weeks, a series called An Interview with God. And so listen, if you've missed the past two Sundays, then make sure you go back and, and catch those messages because because today's message kind of brings it to a surprising conclusion. Uh, in fact, uh, today's message, it, it's so different from the conversation that is captured in the first part of the book that some scholars have debated whether or not this last chapter should even be included in the book of Habakkuk. Like uh, when you look at it, the the literary structure of it moves from narrative in the first two chapters uh, to it moves to one that is more poet- poetic in chapter three. And and some people might even call that a song when, when you look at how it's structured and how it's worded. Um, now, here's the deal. That, that shift, that difference, I think it's important. I, I think it's a big deal. And maybe it offers somewhat of a pattern for us in our own lives. Like if we are if we're frustrated over things that are happening outside of our control like Habakkuk was, or or if we're taken off guard by God's uh, unexpected answer to our questions. Um, uh, When we discover that God's ultimate plan is greater than our immediate preferences, then maybe the only response left for us is to simply worship him. That's where we're going to go for today. So today's message is called, Lord, have it your way. Let me pray, and then we'll dive right in. God, thank you so much, Lord, and um, for just what you've shown us and what you've been teaching us through your word. Um, there's so much we don't understand. There's so much we um, wish we could um, avoid. Uh, there's so many um, moments, God, where we uh, we just miss it. And we fall completely beneath your expectation, dear God. And I thank you, Lord, that you respond appropriately to us. Always. You're always right. And I thank you, Lord, that it is in understanding that that determines how we respond to you. Help us to see your glory, God. Help us to see your majesty. Help us to respond to you with the only thing you deserve, and that is our full devotion and worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the deal. God answers prayers, right? He, He may not answer when you want, and he may not answer how you want, Uh, But God answers prayer nonetheless. And so when we look at Habakkuk, he he brought his concerns to the Lord and the Lord answered him. Uh, The Lord said to him, I am I'm going to punish your disobedience with the people who are even more disobedient than you, the Babylonians. If you remember that from from chapter two, in other words, Habakkuk, Habakkuk is praying for things to get better. But the Lord's answer is is that it's going to get worse. Now, here's the deal, because listen, I don't know how your prayers work, but but when I talk to God, I expect to feel better on the other side of that conversation. I don't know how it works with you, but me, I'm hoping that things will improve, that I'll feel a certain way on the other side. Um, and, And listen, I don't know if I am emotionally prepared to come to God for help and then to hear him say, yeah, court, but it's going to get worse. I don't know if I'm prepared for that. I think, honestly, I think maybe I would prefer for him to just remain silent. Uh, for him to even ignore that question. Because I don't know about you, but listen, for me, I don't want to know everything. I, I don't want to know everything. Sometimes, sometimes it's better for us to learn to trust God through our experience than it is to try and understand God based on our expectations. Uh, uh, the Bible says it this way. It, it, the psalmist writes, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? In other words, somebody can tell you, uh, but sometimes you really just need to find out for yourself. And sometimes the Lord will allow the circumstances around you to converge so that you can do just that. Listen, 
the Lord will allow the bad to get worse in my life so that my cry out to him will grow louder and more sincere. So that my cry out will grow louder and more sincere. Understand there's a difference between wanting God and wanting relief. It's not the same. It's not the same to, to want him as it is to want what you think he can do for you. It's, it's not the same. And, and if you aren't careful, relief, relief will become your God. Like comfort itself can become the thing you worship and compromise will become the religion in which you express that faith. It's so easy for us to drift into idolatry, especially when things aren't going the way we want them to, right? But Habakkuk, Habakkuk was different. He did not allow the presence of bad news to make him doubt the reality of a good God. And so in spite of the looming destruction, in spite of, in spite of the, the judgment that God has communicated will fall on Judah, Habakkuk chooses to remember the faithfulness of God. Uh, let's pick up here, Habakkuk chapter three, verse two says this. It says, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Uh, pause right there because this is, this is the part where you, you stop listening to me and you start to underline and highlight it in your Bible. Like you, you need to remember this. You need to remember what he said. You, you need to be equipped with this type of response because understand every day ain't going your way in life. Some, some outcomes you face, they won't be favorable. Uh, sometimes the things you've gotten away with for a while, sometimes those things will actually catch up with you. And sometimes you'll get exactly what you deserve. And when that happens, when that happens, there is, there is a way to relate to God. There is a way to appeal to him. There is a way to, um, I love, in, as the King James Version says, it says to beseech the Lord. And it's very simple. Lord, have mercy. H have mercy, God. Listen, whenever you see God's might, you look for his mercy. Whenever you see God's might, his power, his strength, you look for his mercy. Uh, listen, God's power is oftentimes veiled behind his glory. It's kind of like... Um, Kind of like the rays of the sun. Like, of course, we all, we love bright, sunny days. We enjoy them so much that we plan our best moments in life around those days. But understand, the same bright light also carries an unseen heat. And if we spend too much time in it, or if we get too close to the source, then the power of that heat can consume the whole planet. God's power is veiled behind his glory at times. And so what you see is in the same way, you can't experience God's glory without also recognizing a need for his mercy. Lord, I see your power. Lord, Lord, I see your strength. I see your might. I, I see your hand moving all across that which you have created. Lord, will you have mercy on me? Listen, we say that all the time. In fact, it's become cliche. Lord, have mercy. We, we say it all the time. But the question is, do you ever mean it? Do you really mean it? Do you ever, do you beg God to respond to you on the basis of his nature rather than on the basis of your own? Do you beg God for his mercy 
Listen, I know what we deserve. I, I know what's just. I, I know that they say what goes around comes around. I know we reap what we sow. I know the Bible says the wages of sin is death. I know what the law says. But God, will you have mercy? In your wrath, will you remember Mercy, I don't deserve it. I haven't earned it. I know what the law says. I know what the standard is. I know what your holiness brings about. I get all of that, God, but will you have mercy? And so here's the deal. What Habakkuk does in the story, in, in, his, in this worship song in chapter three, what he does is he begins recounting the mercy and faithfulness of God throughout the history of Israel. He talks about the days of Moses and how God was their deliverer and how he continued to defeat their enemies and carry them into the promise. And the poetic imagery of, of what he writes is so rich because understand he's not speaking of what happened to them um, from a practical experience of people. He describes it from the vantage point of God. Uh, listen to what it says, verse 12 through 13. It says, in wrath you strove the earth. And in anger, you thresh the nations. You came out to deliver your people to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. Listen, in light of what is to come, Habakkuk is remembering what God has already done. And understand, it's just to be clear, he's not preaching here. Right. He's a prophet, but he's not preaching. There is there is no audience around to hear this testimony. Everything Habakkuk says about God in this moment is for the sole purpose of edifying himself. He's trying to encourage himself in light of what's about to happen. So let me ask you, listen, when the bad in your life gets worse, what do you say? To yourself. What do you say to yourself? What, what thoughts echo in your mind? What's on, on repeat over and over in your thinking? Listen, I'm not talking about what you say to other people. Like maybe you complain about what's happening when you talk to your friends or, or, or maybe you vent all of your anger and frustration to your spouse or, or to a mentor or whatever the case may be. I'm not talking about your conversation with others. I'm asking you in those moments, what do you say to yourself? What, what do you try to focus on in your mind when destruction shows up in your life, do you spend your time rehearsing all the bad news or do you pause to remember the faithfulness of God? Let me help you. When life finally gives me what I deserve, I can use that as a reminder to give God what he deserves. He deserves my worship. He deserves my honor. He deserves my devotion, my full commitment. Uh, Habakkuk's ultimate response to all that was wrong, it was to simply worship the Lord. It doesn't say that he agreed with God's decision to judge. It doesn't say that he liked it. It doesn't say he was looking forward to it. It doesn't say he was pouting about it or that he rebelled against God. The picture we get is that Habakkuk received it as inevitable and he chose to worship the Lord anyway. Listen to what it says in verse 7 through 19. 6 through 19, I'm sorry. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. 
Uh, Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Habakkuk concludes with this thought. He says, the Lord is my strength, not my circumstances. Because the day of calamity, that, that day of judgment, it's coming. Not, not my wealth because my crops and my fields, they may not be producing. Uh, I, I might lose my sheep and I might lose all my cattle. So I'm not trusting in any of that stuff. I may lose all my comfort. I may lose, lose all my security. I might even lose my freedom. But even so, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my savior, because the Lord is my strength. No matter what happens, no matter what I go through, no matter what I'm facing, no matter, no matter what direction the wind blows, my situation turns to, no matter what, there is a place where you can find strength. Habakkuk said, he said, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer, to tread on the heights. We know a deer is light on its feet. You see them bouncing and prancing around, running fast and quick and nimble. There's a way that a deer moves. And Habakkuk says, the Lord gives me the ability to live and to move in the same way. He makes me light on my feet. The cares of the world can't drag me down. The difficulties and the challenges that I face, they can't take me out. None of that stuff can overwhelm me because the, my strength is in the Lord. And here's the deal. If you recognize that you have been drawing from things that aren't trustworthy, if you've been looking for strength in all the wrong places, in all the wrong ways, listen, I wanna let you know that you can find strength in the same place that Habakkuk did. Remember, he's facing the worst thing imaginable, but yet and still, he says, I will rejoice in the Lord because he is my strength. Now listen, I want to invite you to the table of the Lord right now because that's the place where you find that type of strength. In fact, it's the only place that you can find it. The Lord Jesus Christ makes himself available to us in our worst moments, in our most difficult situation, in our most overwhelming circumstances, he makes himself available to us by entering into it with us. Jesus is with his disciples and he's explaining his sacrifice. He's explain, explaining his singular act of atonement to them. And he says to them, he says, this bread represents my body that's been broken for you. The judgment that you deserve for your sin, for your mistake, for your disobedience, the judgment that you deserve has been placed on me. And this bread represents my body that has been broken as a result. Do you believe it? If you believe it, then take the bread and eat. Likewise, he takes the cup and he says, the cup represents my blood that's been poured out for your sin, for all the thing that you've done wrong, for you, missing the mark over and over and over and making a complete mess of everything for your contribution 
to the wickedness that increases in the world. I shed my blood to wash it all away. Do you believe it? If you believe it, then take the cup and drink. And he says, as often as you do this, as often as you come to the table to remember me, to remember what I've done for you in light of whatever you are facing, in light of whatever you're dealing with, in light of whatever you are up against, then you'll find the grace you need to receive the strength I give to be like the feet of deer and tread on the heights of your situation. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much for how you bring resolution uh, to things that seem like they can't be solved, to things that are beyond us, to things that are um, so much more, God, than we can handle. I thank you, Lord. You can handle them. And so we place our trust in you, no place else, no one else, God. We receive from you the strength that you give to be the people you've called us to be. Forgive us our sin. Empower us, God, with your spirit to live in a way that would be pleasing to you. We love you, sir. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen.